What's going on guys? Andrew Pillick Hockey here back again with another video continuing the Toronto Maple Leafs 2024-2025 player previews. Hopefully you guys are enjoying these so far. I'm going to be doing the entire team. So if you guys are new here, make sure to like this video and subscribe. You guys know I love talking Leafs. And listen man, the season's coming. It's getting closer and closer and I'm so excited to talk hockey with you guys going forward. This is a 24-7 channel where you guys can get Leafs talk, so make sure to stick around. I know a ton of you guys will want to. But Easton Cowan, man, this is an interesting player. Will he make the Maple Leafs? Will he be a part of this roster going forward? Will he finally break out of being an OHL player, even though he is super young? He's only 19, and a lot of people look to the height and the weight, but we all know that this guy has what it takes to be an NHL player. And it's something that we need to discuss, the height and weight. But as you become a pro, obviously the height, probably not growing anymore. If he does, hey, that's a plus, but I doubt he will. But he's going to get a little bit bigger. But as we know, in the NHL today, there's a lot of speedy, small-sized wingers that are still able to go out there and throw hits and be physical. And Cowan in the OHL has actually been pretty physical. So we're going to look at Easton Cowan today. Like I said, this guy has just been dynamite in the OHL, and he had 96 points in 54 games last year, and we'll get to the point streak pretty soon because there's an article that I brought up last time that I want to show you guys again, but just look at these numbers, right? We're, we're talking very, very, very insane numbers. You're going from a guy that went from 53 points, 20 goals in 68 games to 96 points in 54 games, just absolutely torching the league and looking amazing. And then at the World Juniors, two points in five games being a plus three. But, you know, we don't really need to talk about the, the pluses. I, I'd like the penalty minutes to come down. But in the OHL, you know, these hothead kids, sometimes they don't know what they're doing. But um, that's a joke, by the way. But Easton Cowan, I want to talk about some of his trophies and some of his accomplishments because that goes into what we're going to be talking about today so uh this article shows on sportsnet that easton Cowan was awarded the red tilson trophy as the ohl's most outstanding player on thursday that obviously this is a an older article but uh he finished with 34 goals like we said he had his highest production rate with 1.7 uh points per 1.78 points per game and that was also the league's second highest production rate which was really cool uh he also had a 36 game point streak that spanned from november 25th through the final game of the regular season which he also carried into the playoffs where it ended at 42 games so when the leafs picked him at 28th overall in the 2023 nhl draft a lot of people were like why are the leafs going after this kid why do they believe that easton cowan is a guy that's going to make this roster and make a difference on this Leafs team. And I mean, I was a little bit surprised. Usually when you see a kid that's sitting at near the top gets called in the first round, you're kind of like, shouldn't he be sitting closer if he was supposed to go in the first round? But that's just, again, the, the, the league has funny ways of finding these guys where it's like you project them to be so much higher or so much lower and they end up being amazing. Just look at the Red Wings and their draft picks in the 90s and early 2000s. They just picked so many guys in these later rounds that turned out to be some of the greatest players in the history of the game. And, like, I mean, look no further than a guy like Pavel Datsuk, right? Like, it's just crazy where you can get some guys. And Easton Cowan was in the first round, and it was a guy that maybe was supposed to go in the second or third round. So... I'm really happy that the Leafs saw the the potential in this guy and they scouted him and he looks like a really, really good pick and I believe it was still a Dubas pick, but this is a guy that I think is going to be very special for the Maple Leafs in years fo coming forward. They, they, they're they going to love this kid. He He's going to do wonders for this team, but the question is, is he going to make the team out of camp? Is he a guy that is going to make the Maple Leafs this year? And that's a video that I've made recently that is posted on the channel if you want to see it now but it's still up in the air a lot of people still look at it as a question mark but I, I want to then also look again because we're going to do it for every player the cap hit is important here if the Maple Leafs feel like they can send somebody down to the minors or trade off a contract because they believe Easton Cowan is the real deal he's coming in at under a million dollars and if you can get production if you can get 15 to 20 goals out of this kid at under a million dollars, 
the Leafs are going to be laughing. This is going to be a nothing contract for them for the next three years and a kid that they believe could be a difference maker going forward. So this cap hit is definitely something that could make or break him making this team as well. But I want to show the lineup, right? And we're doing this in every single video. I want to see where you guys believe he would fit in. And we've briefly talked about the fact that Domi could be in the, the top six and McMahon could slide down to the third line. But if the Maple Leafs truly believe that this is how they want to spread out their top six, and you know, you're also hoping that Bobby McMahon and Matthew Nyes keep producing the way that they have been, because you know, you could see a guy like Cali Yarncroke or Max Domi go up there. Do you believe, and let's just hypothetically say the Leafs don't sign Nick Robertson, right? Would you put Easton Cowan with Max Domi and Cali Yarncroke? Now, the only issue with that is, is Domi's not really great defensively, but Yarncroke is. So you would be having a playmaker in Domi, a defensively sound guy who can put up 20 goals in Cali Yarncroke with potentially an Easton Cowan. So you have the physical defensive guy in Max Domi that could not defensive in terms of playing defense, but defending the kid. Max Domi would be defending Easton Cowan if he played on that line. You know, if anybody touches him, you know, Domi's going to probably do something. And Callie Yarncro can fix the defensive mistakes and show him how to be a pro hockey player. And and that's something that I would really interest me. And who knows, maybe by the end of the season, John Tavares is a third line player and the Leafs try to have Tavares play with Easton Cowan and kind of teach him the ways on the ice as well as off the ice. But they might just do what they did with Fraser Minton, who's another guy that I'll be making a video on, and kind of ease him in with a few games and send him back down. But it begs the question, what more do you want to see from this kid in the OHL? It's it's a, it's the type of move that I hate. I hate that they can't play in the American Hockey League because I think Fraser Minton will end up with the Marlies this season. But it's it sucks that Easton Cowan can't just go and play with the Marlies because it would be the perfect fit. You could play Minton and Cowan on the same line and see what they've got playing together because in the in some of the preseason games and the the rookie tournament games and all that stuff like that, they both looked really good and they looked really good wearing that blue and white. So I would be interested to see how the Maple Leafs want to evaluate their lineup this year and how they want to move guys around because Easton Cowan's a guy that should be getting a look. He should be getting a chance to play, especially because I don't think the Leafs addressed their bottom six in the way that they should have. And I want to see them add more talent down there. There's a lot of grit. There's a lot of defense, but there's not a lot of playmaking and scoring because you're mixing up guys that don't really do that. And I'd, I'd rather them try the kid out for a few games and see if he looks ready to play in the NHL. I think it's going to happen, especially if he has a strong preseason. This kid might get a chance to play in the opening night lineup for the Maple Leafs. There's a lot of really good pros here, and we'll have to see what Craig Berube uh, wants to do because he'll be the new head coach and he'll be the one dictating what they do. So let me know what you guys think. If you agree with me, like this video and subscribe. I'd love to have you guys here. You guys know I love talking Leafs and I want to hear you guys sound off in the comments down below. Hopefully you guys will enjoy these player previews. Lots more to come and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.